Hey everyone, this is Joseph from StartDataEngineering.com. In this video, I'd like to talk about what backfilling is and how we could do backfilling using Apache Airflow. And as always, if you'd like to follow this along in the blog format, I'll leave the link in the description below. The blog contains the code examples as well. So let's get started. What is backfilling? Backfilling refers to any process that involves modifying or adding new data to existing records in a data set. For example, you might want to add a column with a certain value for already processed data set. You might want to change the way your data is processed for historically. So you might want to look back like three months or something and change a value um, depending on how it's being processed. So these, these are what backfill is referred to. It's basically modifying or adding data to existing data sets. In this example, we are going to be using Apache Airflow with a simple SQL script to see how backfilling works. You could also follow along without setting up your own infrastructure, but if you do set up your own infrastructure, you will require Docker, Docker Compose and PG CLI. I'll leave the link in the description below as well. So let's go ahead and start a folder for our project and let's call it Airflow Backfill. We'll, since we'll be using Docker Compose, we will use a popular open source Docker Compose file called Pakal Airflow. You can just look it up. It's uh, one of the popular Airflow setup scripts in GitHub. So let's use that. And then once you have it set up or copied, you could just say Docker Compose up dash D, meaning it will stand up all the services that are defined within the Docker Compose YAML file. And dash D just runs it in the background. So let's see if it's Docker base. Yeah, well, you can see the Airflow instance and Postgres running. Let's go ahead and so let's use our metadata database, which is Postgres, um, to create some sample input and output data. Use this and say Airflow is the password. So a very naive input data. Basically, it has ID input text and data created input columns and the output we are just going to assume we have the same id uh, unique identifier event id some input the same input text the process text data and created and the time it was inserted so let's go and uh, we're just creating some sample values for our input data let's go ahead and copy this over <coughs> if you do so I start from input data. You will see our input. That's good. All right, so execution day. So in Airflow, you can specify starting day of a DAG and you can schedule it to run at a certain interval. Execution day is the scheduled start time of the run that your Airflow DAG run is trying to cover. So let's understand what that means in detail. So if you think about Airflow, it's supposed to run a ETL pipeline after a time interval has passed. So for example, if you start a DAG on January 1st, 2021 and schedule it to run every one hour, the first run will actually take place at 1 a.m. But the, the run that starts at 1 a.m. will actually have an execution day of 0 or 12 a.m. Right? Um, so you can think of the next run would be at 2 a.m. but it'll have an execution day of 1 a.m. So you can think of execution day as the starting time for the time interval that the particular diagram is supposed to cover. So if you if you look at this table it's kind of small but you can see like if you run every day, the first time it will run on the second, but it'll actually have an execution day of one. And similarly, the second run will run on the third, it will have an execution day of the second. And the third run will run on the fourth, but it will have an execution day of three. And similarly, every hour, it will run at hour one or 1 a.m., but it'll have an execution day of zero or 12. And similarly, run two will run at 2 a.m., but it will have an execution day of 1 a.m. and such. Um, an interesting case would be when your um, schedule is not easy, like every day or every hour. Let's say if you are doing something like every six hours, same logic applies. Run one would be at 
6 a.m. But it will consider the starting time of the previous schedule, which is 0 or 12 a.m. as the execution date. Similarly, second run would be at 12, what is that? 12 p.m. to a noon, but it will consider 6 a.m. as the execution date and so on. So that's what execution date is. So now that you know what execution day is, let's go ahead and create a simple DAG, which we can uh, expand on to figure out how to see how uh, backfilling works. So let's do this. Let's create a file called sample DAG.py. So, so when you when you run Docker Compose up, you'll automatically set up a DAX for it'll automatically set up a DAX folder. So you can create a sample DAG within that. What this DAG does is basically it has one task which is just process data, which uh, is just running this SQL script. Let's copy this over and then let's look at what the SQL script does. Let's give it a few minutes for let's give a few minutes for the DAG to get picked up by the Airflow web server. In the meantime, we can go over what the SQL script does. So basically I copied this part into a separate SQL script. Um, what this script does is it gets some input from input data of table and filters by date, time, and hour. So if you look at this, this actually represents the execution date in year, 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 month, month, day, day format, which is applicable to a date format in Postgres. And you can extract R from a date, time, or timestamp field in Postgres using extract. So you're getting the R from the date time created and execution date dot R. So this is, Kind of interesting because execution date is actually a date time field. Um, it's a pendulum object which is basically a extension of Python standard date time utility. And it has a function called dot hour which would give you a number from 0 to 23 depending on the hour of the day. So you can use these two filters to basically filter by day and filter by hour. So you can, these are called macros. So if you see these double open and double close they are called macros and airflow has a bunch of macros that you can use um, within your sql scripts the other thing we use here is macros.uid.uid4 um, macros again uid it provides us access to python's uid so any function that python standard uid utility has we can use within here the other interesting thing you notice is on conflict so this is a Python, or sorry, Postgres uh, feature, which basically does an upset. So what is an upset? An upset is an insert or update. So this will insert a record into output data if the ID of the row being inserted does not exist in the output data. But if it does exist, it will update the output data as row. Well. So basically that's what uh, upset does so it's explained here so let's see if the DAG is back here again all right so the DAG is on so let's go ahead and switch it on um, since it starts on the first and it is the tenth today it'll start running and trying to catch up let's let it run for a few runs all right it's getting queued up not sure how it is run. Oh, yeah, so it's running right here. So you see three runs are, are complete. Let's wait for a few more runs to be done. In the meantime, we can log into our um, database to check the output. So this is a start from sample output data. So you can see how it has run for um zero one when it was for zeros from zero one from zero two zero three zero four zero five so let's let it run and now let's talk about 
<coughs> how we how we want to backfill information. So let's say this keeps running for how many other days, and let's say we want to change the way it is being processed, but we want this change to only apply for the day of 2001 from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. or 13 um, in military time UTC. So what we could do is for this chunk of time, we could change the DAG definition, meaning we will add this additional kind of good day to our DAG, and then we will do something called a backfill, which will basically rerun the DAGs for those time intervals. Let's see if it's run. All right, seems like we have run quite a bit. Okay, so first thing to do would be to pause this DAG. And then what we do is we go to our DAG file, sample DAG, and basically instead of world, we are just going to say well, good day. So where is that? And there we go. Yeah, well, good day. All right, good. Okay. So now our DAG is paused. Let's look at the code. And you can see the day has been picked up by the UI. While keeping the DAG switched off, what we can do is we'll have to go into our web server. Um, in this case, we are running it within a Docker, so we can SSH into it using interactive mode of dash ID. And what you do is you say add flow backfill. You specify a starting date, and I'm specifying it in date time format because uh, we need the time because ours run, our DAGs run every hour. And we specify the end time. And then we say <coughs> reset DAG runs. What reset DAG runs would do is it will actually reset, it will delete um, the DAG runs that are logged in the Airflow metadata, metadata database and then we replace it with these new ones. And finally, we give the give it the name of the okay, simple. We give it the name of the diagrams. And press enter. Okay. So it'll ask us if you want to delete the existing ones and override it with the new ones and say yes. So it'll take a few minutes to run. Let's give it a few minutes. So these should be run within your uh, Airflow server uh, where it can pick up the DAG bag which contains your DAG definition and such. You could also have it switched on but uh, we just switched it off uh, this case just to make it simpler but you could very well have it switched on and uh, depending on your parallelism it will run that many number of uh, tasks as required all right so you can see backfill is done so let's quit this and let's see how our data has changed So you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You can see how 10 to 13 has changed from hello world to hello world good day. So this is what, but 14 has not changed because we only ran from 10 to 13. So this is what backfilling is. So you can change existing data, modify it, add new data to it after the processing has been done. It's a very common use case. Um, so Airflow provides support for this out of the box. Once you're done, you could use uh, again Docker Compose to spin down all your services. So we should be good. So that's it. I hope this article gives you a good idea of how to use the uh, execution date with macros and how you could run backfill backfills using Airflow. Um, whenever you design a ETL pipeline, it's always a good idea to think about how you would run backfills on a particular pipeline because that will help you design idempotent tasks or DAGs 
and prevent unintended side effects from happening. For example, in our SQL query, instead of um, these upsets, if we had done a standard insert, it would have created duplicate records in our case. But since we have an ID, we are using an upsert. So thinking about um, ETL design in terms of um, failures, like how would we handle in case of a backfill requirement will help you design DAGs without um, side effects. I hope you learned something from this video. If you like uh, or learned anything new, please feel free to like, subscribe, share, visit my blog, um, sign up, um, share on Twitter, all the social media stuff. It really helps out um, with the rankings. Thank you.